Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be about the concept of limiting reactant which is one of a very key concepts in moles and stoichiometry. So when we talk about limiting reactants, obviously there's another word that we come across which is the excess reactant. Excess reactants and limiting reactants. I'm assuming that you've already watched the video of moles, mole ratios, the basic methods and the idea of stoichiometry previously. Only then we'll be able to solve questions that come in the concept of limiting reactant. So what is it? The limiting reactant is a reactant used in the chemical equation, which participates in the equation, which tries to make the product, but compared to other reactants within the same equation. This particular reactant does not have the capacity to produce the maximum amount of product. Now what happens actually? When you have, for example, two different reactants like X and Y give you, for example, Z, hypothetically, X is one chemical, Y is the other chemical. And when you find out the moles of X and Y, sometimes the molar ratio, sometimes their amounts in the beginning does not allow one of these reactants to give you enough product, and that is limiting reactant. Let's study this with an example. So let's let's take an ex actual example. For example, let's suppose we have sulfuric acid reacting with potassium hydroxide to give you potassium sulfate and water. But this is not the balance equation, obviously. So we balance it. We get to know that two moles of potassium hydroxide and two moles of water are part of the equation when we balance it. If we take the same concentration and the same volume of the initial sulfuric acid, this is our sulfuric acid, and this is our potassium hydroxide. If we say take the same concentration and the same volume, we're gonna get the same moles of both these substances. So let's suppose this is 50 centimeter cube. This is also 50 centimeter cube. This Sulfuric acid has a concentration of hypothetically 0.05 mole per decimeter cube and over here potassium hydroxide also has a concentration of 0.05 mole per decimeter cube. Here you have the complete data for two reactants which is good for us. So we find the moles of both these reactants and we see that how we can find the moles. So we know the moles can be calculated for sulfuric acid it's going to be C V divided by a thousand. I'll put it over here. Yeah. The concentration is 0 0.05. The volume is 50 and thousand is a mathematical constant. So when we solve it, we get to know, let's suppose 50 times 0 0.05 divided by a thousand is going to give us 0 0.0025. So 0 0.0025 moles of sulfuric acid. We know that the moles of potassium hydroxide are going to be the same, right? Because they have the same concentration and volume. So CV divided by 1000, it gives us 0 0.05 times 50 divided by 1000, which means 0 0.0025 moles of potassium hydroxide. So, so initially they have the same moles, but then we apply the ratio and then we see which reactant gives us less amount of the product to find out which one is the limiting reactant because this is kind of limiting our product so we apply the ratio over here first we apply the ratio between sulfuric acid and one of our products pick any product there are two products water and sulfur water and potassium sulfate pick any one i'll pick potassium sulfate the ratio is one is to one so 0 0.0025 moles of sulfuric acid should give you how much? It would obviously give you 0 0.0025 moles of potassium sulfate. So based on sulfuric acid, this is the amount of potassium sulfate that you will get. Now let's do another calculation. Now let's use the data for potassium hydroxide. Between potassium hydroxide and the same potassium sulfate this time, the ratio is 2 is to 1. 
So 0.0025 moles of potassium hydroxide that we calculate previously would give you how much potassium sulfate. So this time we solve it, we do the cross multiplication and we get to know the answer is going to be 0 0.00125 moles potassium sulfate. This time the answer is smaller compared to the previous one. So it tells us that because of the potassium hydroxide and its own ratio, we get smaller amount of the product. That is why potassium hydroxide is going to be our limiting reactant. Because it is because of the potassium hydroxide that we are getting smaller amount of the product and we will use the smaller amount for our further calculations. Let's try another question to see what steps do we use and how do we phrase it. It says refer to the question, refer to the equation obviously. Zinc is reacting with two moles of hydrochloric acid and it's giving us zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas which is obviously being released. Which one is the limiting reactant if 5 grams of zinc metal is added to a 23.5 centimeter cube sample of 2.91 mole per decimeter cube hydrochloric acid. So let's identify the data over here. 5 grams of zinc metal is one important piece of data that we have over here. So mass of zinc is equals to 5 grams. Mole of zinc, we are calculating it right away, is going to be equal to mass divided by molecular mass or atomic mass. So for zinc, it's going to be 5 divided by 65 because for zinc, the atomic mass is going to be 65. So 5 over 65 gives us 0 0.0769. So that is 0 0.0769 moles of zinc. Over here on the other side, it says 23.5 centimeter cube sample of 2.91 mole per decimeter cube. That is the concentration and volume, right? So this is the volume and over here we have the concentration of hydrochloric acid. So find the moles of hydrochloric acid as well. Moles of HCl is equals to CV divided by 1000 because it's concentration and volume so we can't use the mass and molecular mass while a formula. Let's see. Over here it says concentration which is 2.91. The volume is 23.5 and 1000 is a mathematical constant. So 2.91 times 23.5 divided by 1000 gives us 0 0.0683. So 0 0.0683 moles of hydrochloric acid. Do not stop the calculation here. It's just two steps of the calculation. The second and the most important step is applying the ratio. So apply the ratio between zinc and any one of your products. You can pick zinc chloride, you can pick hydrogen as well. In my case, let's suppose I'm going for zinc and zinc chloride. What's the ratio over here? It's one is to one. So between zinc and zinc chloride, the ratio is one is to one. So 0 0.0769 mole of zinc will give you how many moles of zinc chloride? It's obviously going to be the same, 0 0.0769 mole zinc chloride. This is our answer with the reference to zinc and its own mole and own ratio. Now let's do the same calculation but this time using the HCl because we have to apply the ratio of the reactants with the product. There are two reactants, apply the ratio one by one. First between zinc and zinc chloride to find the answer. Then apply the ratio between HCl and zinc chloride to find the answer. So this time I'm going to do the same between HCl and zinc chloride. This time the ratio is 2 is to 1. So between HCl and zinc chloride, we know the ratio is 2 is to 1. So 0 0.0683 moles of hydrochloric acid will give you how many moles of zinc chloride? Let's try it. We know it's going to be a cross multiplication and we get to know that it gives you 0 0.0683 divided by 2 which is 0 0.0341. 0 0.0341 moles zinc chloride. 
which one is giving us a smaller value of zinc chloride? It is the hydrochloric acid based on its own ratio. So that is why it's, give, it's giving us a smaller amount of the product. That is why hydrochloric acid is going to be the limiting reactant. So HCl is the limiting reactant because it gives us smaller amount of the product. Let's try another question of a similar sort. Let's see. It says using the equation, obviously using the equation, two moles of iron three oxide are reacting with carbon, which is pure carbon apparently, to produce carbon dioxide and some moles of iron. Which reactant remains in excess? So now they're not concerned with the limiting one, they're concerned with the excess one. So obviously the one which is not limiting is the excess one. If 500 grams of iron three oxide react with 60 grams of coke. So we have two pieces of data over here. First is 500 grams of iron three oxide. And then we have 60 grams of pure carbon, which is coke. Let's find the moles of the reactants because we can't start with mass. So iron oxide will be calculated over here. So for iron oxide, the moles of Fe2O3 is equals to mass divided by molecular or molar mass, which is 500 divided by the molar mass. How do we find the molar mass? For Fe2O3, it's going to be 2 times 56 plus 16 times 3. So let's do it twice the 56 plus 16 times 3 is equals to 160. So this is the molar mass of iron. We divide the 500 grams divided by 160, which is the molar mass. It's going to be 500 divided by 160, 3.125 moles. This is the moles of iron oxide. Let's do the ratio right away. Let's pick one of the products. I want to go for, let's suppose, iron. I want to go for iron. So I'm going to apply the ratio between iron oxide and iron. Between iron oxide and iron, I can see the ratio is 2 is to 4. So I know between iron 3 oxide and iron, the ratio is going to be 2 is to 4, which means 1 is to 2. Now let's solve it. If Iron has a mole of 3.125 based on the question. How much iron do we get? Iron oxide was apparently 3.125 moles. How much iron do we get? We get obviously 3.125 times 2, which is 6.25 moles. So 6.25 moles iron. This is the calculation based on iron oxide. We first found the moles of iron oxide and then we found the moles of iron based on our own molar ratio, right? I'll make a better box here. Now let's repeat the entire step with carbon. So over here, we have carbon. The moles of carbon is going to be equal to 60 divided by the atomic mass in our case, which is 60 divided by 12. It's going to give us five moles of pure carbon. We are going to apply the ratio between the same product and the reactant we're concerned with. So same iron will be concerned over here and between carbon. So the ratio over here is three is to four. So between iron and pure carbon, the ratio was three for carbon and four for iron. The moles of carbon in our case is five. So five moles of carbon can give you how many moles of iron? We get to know that we have to apply the ratio over here. So it's going to be um, five, particularly, particularly, it's going to be four divided by three times five, which is equal to 6.66. So over here, we get 6.66 moles of iron. Based on our calculation from the mole ratios, we get to know that carbon has a capacity of giving you 6.6 .6 mole iron and iron oxide could give you 6.25 mole iron. Which one is a bigger value? Obviously, this one is a larger value, larger moles of product.
and this one is smaller moles of product so the one which is giving you smaller mole of product is going to be the limiting reactant so fe2o3 fe2o3 becomes the limiting reactant because it is giving you smaller amount of product carbon becomes the excess reactant because it is giving you more amount of the product more moles of the product and this is what we are concerned with over here so remember everyone when we are dealing with limiting reactants we calculate the moles of the reactants first based on their own formula whether it's the concentration one whether it's the volume of a gaseous reactant or it's the mass of a substance you pick your own formula find the moles and then apply the ratio of the reactant with any one of the product that is totally your call which product you choose but apply the ratio of the reactant with that product to find the moles of the product and then tell us which one is giving you less amount of the product which one is giving you more amount of the product the one which gives you less amount of the product is limiting reactant the one which gives you more amount of the product is going to be the excess reactant in the next video we have some past paper questions that we're going to try to enhance our learning so stay tuned guys